Good evening, everyone. How had your day been? You are welcome to dining with the Lord. Two weeks ago, we started a series of teaching on holiness. And in the first teaching, we learned about sanctification. The second study we learn about holy living. And tonight we shall be learning benefits of holy living. If you were not at these two services, I will counsel that you get the Bible study outlines or you get to our media and download the message, it will always be a blessing. Holiness is one of the all-time Bible doctrine. Sometimes ago, I listened to two people from different denominations. They were discussing, or should I say, they were arguing that holiness is a pet doctrine of a particular denomination. And the other person said, no, it is a doctrine of all time. Uh, in the Pentecostal circle, they used to say, out of the doctrines of the Bible, there are some that are said to be essential. There are some that are said to be non-essential. So it's always said in the essential, that is, doctrines that has to do with the basic tenet of Christianity, there should be unity. On the non-essential, whether we should wear a ring or cover our head or wear trousers, let there be liberty. But in all things, let there be charity. Because the whole commandment is love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. And tonight we'll be looking at benefits of holy living. Benefits. You know, human beings generally want to know what is in it for me? From the Garden of Eden where Eve was saying this is a tree that one that will make one wise that it's good for food and is good looking. To David when he was coming to face Goliath he said what will happen to the person who killed this man? They said his family will be free from tax and he will become the husband of the king's daughter. To Apostle Peter, who asked the Lord, we have left all and follow you. What is going to be in it for us? So humanity in all generations wants to know what is the benefit of what you are asking me to do. Tonight, that's what we are looking at. So the behavioral objective of tonight's teaching is to equip us with the benefits in holy living with the intent that all of us will desire holy living and will go ahead and live holy life. Introduction. Holiness means being totally devoted or separated to God from the world. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13 to 16. 1 Peter chapter 1. Thank you, media. We will, we will we will work together tonight. Please bring it down a little bit. I'm not seeing it very well here. Hello, I'm not seeing it here. Okay. 
Therefore, guard up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 14. Please, I want old King James. I want old King James. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. As obedient children, not fashioning ourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Now here we see Apostle Peter's explanation of why we should be holy. Because God who called us is holy and he wants us to be holy. Why does he want us to be holy? Don't forget when God created man, he created man in his own image and after his likeness. So in the way he is holy, that's the way he created us to be holy. Why? So that we will live eternally with him in holiness and righteousness. Hallelujah. Do you understand that? So if he created you in his image, he wants you to live holy lives here, is because at the end of your race here on earth, you will dwell with him eternally in holiness and righteousness in a holy country called heaven. Hallelujah. That's very simple for everybody to understand. So it involves living according to the standard and requirements of God. God has a standard. He has a requirement. That's why when he led the captivity captive, he gave gifts unto men. He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints so that the saints will do the work of ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ, till we come one in the unity of faith and unto the knowledge of the Son of God and unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. There is a measure of the stature that God expects the believer to live up to. And that is the standard of God. And that standard is holiness. That standard is holiness. In Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present yourselves a holy sacrifice, a, a, a living sacrifice, rather, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He said we should present ourselves holy to God. And that is reasonable. Which means, if we do not present ourselves holy unto God, we are unreasonable. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. What is the standard of this world? Unholiness. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. That perfect will of God is holiness. Wholeness. Amen. Praise the Lord. So believers are a holy nation. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. If you are a royal sister, you will know that is where your, uh, is it, uh, watch word is taken from. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So the, the body of Christ is a nation. And that nation is a holy nation. You know that nation by the standard of holiness that we live. By the standard of holiness. See? So it's a holy nation. The believers or the church is a holy nation. 
It's a holy nation. It's a peculiar people. Yes. Don't take it away. Don't take it away. Yes. A peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into a marvelous light. A marvelous light. We are called out of darkness. Unholiness is darkness. Marvelous light is holiness. We are called out of darkness. We must come out of darkness and enter into light. Hallelujah. So everyone who is born again, whether you believe it or not, you have been called out of darkness. You are no more part of darkness. You have come into marvelous light. And that marvelous light is holiness, purity. That's very important for us, not just to know, but to believe. We have been separated from the world. We need to live worthy of our calling. We need to live worthy of our calling. We are called believers because of our faith. We are called brethren because of our love. We, we are called uh, uh, saints because of holiness. If we uh, have had people say there is nobody who is a saint. No, they lie. They didn't know the scriptures. Because believers are saints. That's because of holiness. We are saints of God. And when Jesus will come in the rapture, he will come to rapture only saints. Can I hear an amen? So, we are saints. We are saints. We need to live worthy of that calling. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of our vocation. We are with ye are called. We are called into a vocation of holiness. That's why some denomination, they are wearing white because they have been called from darkness into light. We don't wear it because it is not the external, it is the inner purity we are talking about. So it doesn't matter whether you wear yellow or you wear green or you wear red. How pure is your heart? That's the issue. That's the thing that is important. Hallelujah. Holiness or holy living is for the benefit of the believer. Can I hear an amen? That amen is not sounding very well. It's for our benefit. Yes, that's the truth. God is holy. And holiness by the believer will not make him more holy or more God. It's not for God's benefit. It's for our benefit. If we become holy, that will not make God more holy or make him God or more God. He is already God by his overall standard. It's not going to change him, but it's going to help us. It is for our good. Can I hear an amen? Psalm 24, verses 3 to 5. Psalm 24, verses 3 to 5. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that had clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor swarried deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing of the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. See, the Bible is giving us a, a, a revelation there of the, the import of holy living. Let's look at benefits of holy living. Benefit number one, access to God. Access to God. Holiness grants us unhindered unlimited and unrestricted access to the presence of God. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12. That's the motto of a particular ministry. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which 
no man shall see the law. Follow peace with all men and holiness. Here we see that holy living will grant us access into the presence of God. When a prayer is short anywhere in the world, the first thing that will be looked at is who is praying? Is he a saint or a sinner? If he's a saint, the attention of heaven is raised. The angels are standing watch to make that prayer effective. If he's a sinner, the demons will just be laughing. Angels will be inactive. The ceiling cannot permit the prayer to go beyond the sin. If a sinner, except it is prayer of repentance to receive salvation. So when prayers are short, the attention is who is praying. So when we live holy lives, we have access to the throne room. We have access to the presence of God. And that is very, very important as a benefit of holy living. In Psalm 15, verses 1 to 5, Psalm 15. No, Psalm 15. Psalm 15. I'm, okay. I'm seeing. Yes, thank you. Lord, who shall abide in the tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? That's the psalm is asking a question from the Lord. It's like, what is the qualification of having access to your presence? What is the qualification of making heaven at last? What is the qualification of granting, being granted audience with you? Yes. Verse 2. He that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart, he that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contemned, but honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own heart, and changeth not. He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh the reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved from the presence of God. That's my own addition. That means you will have access to the presence of God. And all that is written from verse 1 to verse 2 to 4 and a half is qualification of holiness. Amen. So holiness will grant us access into the presence of God. Holiness will make believers to approach God's throne without any sense of guilt or condemnation. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Let us approach the throne of grace. Now, we, the holiness will grant unto us the boldness to approach from, I mean, to approach the throne of grace. And it will make us to obtain mercy. Pastors uh, taught uh, two, two Sundays about the broad eye view of mercy. A closer look on mercy. Mercy is found at the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number two, peace of mind. Another benefit of Holy living is peace of mind. Peace of mind. Peace is a heritage of the godly. Peace is our heritage. John chapter 14, 
verse 27. John 14, verse 27. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the word give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Peace. The peace that Jesus had given to us believers is different from the peace of the world. It's the peace that passes all understanding, that makes our, our mind to be at rest. Hallelujah. That's one of the benefits of uh, holy living in Psalm 37 verse 11. Psalm 37 verse 11. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Abundance of peace. Abundance of peace. The Bible said the wicked flee when no man pursue. That's in uh, Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1. The, the, the wicked flee when no man pursue. But the holy person is at peace. When I sleep in my house, I don't owe anybody. I'm just in my house, so I sleep very well. If anybody knock, I will ask him, what are you looking for? Why? Because my heart is justified in me that I'm not owing anybody. I've not stolen anybody's wife. I've not stolen anybody's money. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So all round peace is assured to the believer who makes holiness a lifestyle. All round peace is assured to a believer who make holiness a lifestyle. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 7. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 7. When a man's way pleaseth the Lord, he maketh even his enemy to be as, at peace with him. He make, God makes even one's enemy to be at peace with one when our way pleases the Lord. Yeah, and because God is a holy God and we live a holy life, our way we please the Lord. And then anybody that wants to do evil to us, God will let them see that. <laughs> don't touch, don't touch that person. Don't touch that person. And that is very important for us as believers. Hallelujah. Praise God. Great peace is for those who fear the Lord. Great peace is for those who fear the Lord. In Psalm 119, verse 165. Psalm 119, verse 165. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Great peace. God ensures that those who love him, those who are willing to obey his word, he apportions great peace to them. And that is very, very instructive. Let's run because of time. Number three, protection. There is a hedge of God around every believer. There is a hedge of God around every believer. In Job chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Job chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear thee? Feared God for naught? Hast thou not made an hedge about him, about his house, about all that he had on every side? Thou art 
blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. One of the two things that the edge of God does is protect. The edge of God, we have as believers, there is the edge of the fire of the Holy Spirit round about us. You may not see it, but witches and wizards, they see it. Occultic people, they see it. There is the edge of ministering spirits round about us. You may not see them, but those who have developed esoterical sites, they can see them. They know. When they see a child of God, they know. Because there is an hedge round about that person. And that hedge is a result of holy living. Remove holy living, that edge is removed. That edge is broken. And anything can come in. I have heard that people say uh, they shot arrow at preachers at crusades. The truth of the matter is if a preacher is living in sin, ordinary familiar spirit will, will throw that at them and it will hit them because the edge is not there. For so many years I've been doing crusade, there was not a time in fact, if there is a person in the congregation who had come with satanic power, the Holy Spirit will reveal. Some of the time we won't say anything. Some of the time we will talk. Say there is a, a woman here who had come with a diabolical power. Please try it. The moment you say that, they won't try it. Because they know that the Holy Spirit must have revealed that to you. So there is an edge. There is the edge of the blood of Jesus there is the edge of the fire of the Holy Spirit. They are the edge of ministry speed round about us. God is the glory within us. But there is a wall of fire round about of Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5 is where I have just quoted. Yes. For I see the Lord will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory within her. God lives in us. The Holy Spirit lives in us. That is the glory within us. But there is a wall of fire. Fire of the Holy Spirit. In Psalm 98 verse 3. He said a fire goeth before him. And consume all his enemies round about. So you don't need to say oh God kill all my enemies. You don't need to say that. If you are living a holy life, any enemy that comes around you, they come close to fire and then they can be consumed. But because they can see, they won't come close. They will keep their distance because they know if I come close, fire will burn me. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you know that, that's enough for you to just live holy lives. And then you become very dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. Very dangerous. Amen. Because you are protected. Hallelujah. A believer living in holiness has nothing to fear from the devil. You have nothing to fear. Isaiah 54 verse 17. Isaiah 54 verse 17. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall arise against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, and they are righteousnesses of me, saith the Lord. It's the heritage of servants of God, not pastors alone. Every believer who is living a holy life is a servant of God. Because you are serving righteousness. You were serving sin before. Now you come to Christ, you are serving righteousness. You are a servant of righteousness. Therefore, you are a servant of God. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon. Hallelujah. That makes you bold. That's why some of us, we go to very dangerous territory to preach the gospel. That was a particular place in Benway State. It's called uh, Obagaji, the 
headquarters of Agatu local government area. My friend told me that, that that place, they are very fetish. Except God tells him to go and preach that he won't go. The people are very fetish. I said, eh. Hey. So one day he told me we are going there. He said, we are going there. He said, yes. Are you sure? Did God tell you? He said, God told you. I said, go and do spiritual mapping. The pastor that we sent almost died because his motorcycle got accident on the way. He almost died. So we know we have to go with stronger intercession. Anyway, we went there and we preached the gospel. They thought we were coming to extort them. When they saw we brought our food, we brought our clothing, we gave food to them, we gave clothing to them, we preached the gospel to them free of charge. Then they begged us that we should come again. That When we came, they wanted to deal with us. But they saw that it's not possible. Why? Because we are servants of God. No weapon formed against us, we prosper. As we are living holy lives, every weapon we fail. I say every weapon we fail. It's a fact. Amen. Let's go on because of our time. The protection and deliverance of God is guaranteed for everyone who is living holy life. Let's go to number four. The supernatural. Holiness is tied to the operation of the supernatural in the life of a believer. If we live holy life, we will give access, freedom, liberty for the Holy Spirit to operate. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 8. Let thy garment be always white and let thy hide lack no oil. That doesn't mean you should become a celeb person and begin to wear white clothes. But what that is saying, let there be no spot. See, the Holy Spirit is the giver of the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. And he operates only in holy places. So when we live holy lives, we make ourselves available for the Holy Spirit and his gifts to operate. So the supernatural is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the life of the people of God, bringing glory to God. That is what we call the supernatural. And for a holy person, the supernatural will become a commonplace. So God wants us to keep our garments unspotted. To keep our lives not spotted with sin. To keep our life pure. Pastor was talking about us not overriding our conscience. Because our conscience is the candle of the Lord. It is through our conscience that the Lord gets across to us. So when we override our conscience, the Spirit of God will not be able to pass information to us through our conscience or our spirit. Our human spirit, we have contact with the Spirit of God when our life is holy. Am I communicating? So that is why the supernatural become a common occurrence in the lives and gatherings where holiness is held in high esteem. And that's why God has graciously given us our teachers, our pastors, teaching us all these things so that the supernatural will become a common occurrence in our midst. God is always looking for human vessels through whom he can operate. God is always looking for human vessels through whom he can operate. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 20. Are you getting something tonight? I mean, are you understanding me? Understandest thou what thou heareth? Okay, good. Second Timothy chapter 2. But in a great house, there are not only vessels 
of gold and silver, but also of wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Now, a great house is a place where there is a gathering of a lot of people. You know, when Israel came out of Egypt, that uh, there was a mixed multitude that came out with them. In fact, the mixed multitude were the ones that started grumbling and complaining and murmuring. And then the other people joined them. Innocent people, they don't join the mixed multitude. So in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold, there are vessels that are wood, that are earth. Yes, verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself, that's where we're going. It is the duty of a man to purge himself or relieve himself of unholy things. Stand away. Touch not unholy things so that you will not be defiled. If a man will purge himself, if a woman will purge herself, if a boy will decide that I want to be a vessel that is pure. He said, if a man will purge himself, therefore, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. So it's our, our duty. It's our responsibility. It should be our desire. It should be our thirst. It should be our hunger to live holy lives. Why? It's for our good. Because we'll become a vessel unto honor. God will honor us and use us for his glory. Amen. Praise God. So, when that happens, it's, it brings glory to God and blessings to us. Everything that brings glory to God brings blessings to us. An unholy profane believer should not expect the supernatural. An, un an unholy believer should not expect the supernatural. Number five, promotion. The only way for a believer living a holy life to go is upwards. The only way for anyone who is living a holy life is to go forward or to go upwards or to make progress. God is pleased with a holy believer and he will promote such. In Psalm 75 verses 6 and 7. Psalm 75 verses 6 and 7. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it one down and set it one up. God promotes those who live holy lives. He makes sure they go up. You know, in that verse, he said, promotion does not come from the east, from the west, from the south. He didn't mention the north because the throne of God is towards the north. He does, you know, he sits in the sides of the north and that's the promotion. When he said go forward or go northward, that's promotion. Hallelujah. So the mind of God for everyone who is living holy lives is progress, is promotion. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number six, prosperity. God will always prosper a believer living in total separation from the world. God will always prosper in Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Psalm 1. All of us, you know it by heart. I was, I was uh, having family altar with my grand, two grandsons. And uh, I was telling them that I was asking them whether they know the Ten Commandment. They don't know it. So I took them to Exodus chapter 20. And uh, we were able to bring out the Ten Commandments. 
And after that, they say, Grandpa, your family altar is too long. <laughs> Grandpa, your family altar is too long. If it's our daddy or our mommy, we won't be this long. Look at that. Ah, Grandpa, your family altar is too long. I said, okay. Don't worry. You don't understand. It is this same family altar that brought your parents to where they are. So don't worry. <laughs> Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinner, nor seated in the seat of the scum. When we are alive, we are either standing or walking or sitting. When we are awake, we are either we are either walking or sitting or standing. I read a book many years ago by Watchman Nee. The title is Sit, Stand, and Walk. He that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. That is, what the ungodly people say is not what you do. There are so many things that is going on in the internet. If you do this, this. If, there are too many teachers on the internet. And the, so many things they teach is not correct. It's not correct. So if you are the kind of person that will not walk in the counsel of the word of God or in the counsel of the servants of God, then you will walk in the counsel of the Facebook. I hope I'm not, I'm not abusing Facebook here so that they will not do <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Either, so, or sit in the way of sinner. See, these three situations will always influence our life. Whose counsel we walk in, who we sit with, who we stand with. It will always affect us if it is not correct people. That's why in this year of new beginning, there are some people you must sack in your surrounding, in your community of friends. There are some people, no, you cannot afford to continue to walk in their counsel. Amen? Yes, number, verse 2. Verse 2. Have you taken it? Bring it back. Psalm 1. Okay. Verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law that he meditate day and night. Yes. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now if you look at what he does, you will see that it is a picture of holy living. His delight is in the word of God. It is the word of God that he takes a counsel from. It is from the word of God that he, he, he runs his business with. He says it will be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. It will bring forth its fruit in the season and its leaf will not, will not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. There are some people in the in the body of Christ, they don't want to do anything. They just pray. And after they finish praying, they go to sleep. And they do nothing. But what will prosper? I didn't hear you. Now you say I'm old. So we must do something. And we must do it in righteousness, in holiness. That is what will bring God's type of prosperity. Deuteronomy 28, we know that. Don't let us go. Prosperity in God's mind is total. Spirit, soul, and body. Third John 2. Third John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. As you are born again, 
and you are tongue talking, your health must be perfect. Because God is a total God. The gospel is a total package. God wants you to prosper physically, financially, materially. He also wants you to prosper spiritually. He also wants you to prosper in health all around. All around. All around. I got a call uh, a few weeks ago and I was asked, when last did you check your BP? I just smiled. Because the person was concerned about my health. But the truth of the matter is that to the glory of God and by the grace of God, I'm very healthy. And I'm going to be like that for a very long time. Why? Because that's what the word of God has said. You will serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water. And he will take sickness away from you. None will be barren nor cast their young. And the numbers of your days he will fulfill. That's why I'm running the way I'm running. The first 30 years of my life has been spent in iniquity and sin. I wasn't living then. The second year, the second 30 years, I sat in church to learn the word of God, the will of God, the will of God. The last 30 years, I'm going to spend it running, preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I'm very healthy. Nothing. I'm more healthy than I was when I was 30 years old. Now. And I'm going to be like that for a very long time. I only hope that the rapture will overtake me so that I will not die. I will go in the rapture to meet with Jesus. That's why we must all do evangelism. I was talking to God one day. I was saying, sir, um, I, I like to be like Elijah. I like to be like Enoch. He said, yes, the way you are doing the evangelism, shuka shuka like this, is that the way that the whole world will hear the gospel and then Jesus will come? The, everywhere went quiet. Because we are the one that is delaying Jesus' coming. Because we are not doing evangelism as if we believe that truly anyone who die in sin will go to hell. As if truly anyone who come to Christ will go to heaven. Anyway, that is by the way. Amen. Prosperity. So God's mind for all of us is prosperity. John 10, 10b. John 10, 10b. Yes. I may read the whole. The thief comes not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. More abundantly is prosperity. Abundant life is prosperity. More than enough. My wife used to pray, pray a prayer. Many times I'll tell her, no, don't pray that prayer again. It's a prayer of selfishness. She said, you will not labor for another man to eat. Does it look good? Yes. She's praying. She, she doesn't want me to labor for I said, but if I don't labor in such a way that somebody else will be able to eat half of my labor, then it means I didn't work enough. Well, I'm supposed to labor enough for me and I can give to other people. Hallelujah. You don't get what I'm saying. Do you? Yes. When you have abundance, which means you have more than enough, more than you need, whatever is remaining, give it to other people. That's why I'm not pot-bellied. Hallelujah. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what I told somebody. I went to meet Brown Money. I said, Brown, Bra wrote me, and you move yoku. I want to, I want to have pot belly. <laughs> Brown wrote me, said, Daddy, it is too late. I said, ah, what do you mean? He said, it's too late. 
Hallelujah. It's only bishops that have pot belly. That's why I, 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 I said some people should be bishop because they have pot belly. Our pastor is not a bishop. That's why he doesn't have a pot belly. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm just kidding. Yes, Psalm 37 verse 25. We're just looking at prosperity. Prosperity. I have I've been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. So the righteous will have enough and more than enough. Psalm 34 Psalm 35 rather verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified with at pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And in this context, we are talking about people who are living holy lives. God has pleasure in our prosperity. God wants us to prosper. And that is one of the benefits of living holy life. Number seven, for the sake of this teaching. You know, in Vine Branch, we always say, we are not exhaustive. You can add number eight, number nine, number ten, number eleven, and number twelve. Number seven, heaven. Holiness will make the believer we take the believer to heaven. Holiness, we take the believer to heaven. John chapter 14, verse 2 and 3. John 14, verse 2 and 3. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us in heaven. And he has asked us to prepare ourselves for that place. And part of the way of preparing ourselves for that place is to live holy lives. To live holy lives. That's part of our preparation. Second Timothy, sorry, uh, Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. Revelation 21 verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone which is the second death. You see the categories of sins that were enumerated in that place they are the work of the flesh. They are unholy living. And to shock you, he put all liars there. Which means all liars will not make heaven. No matter what kind of lie, some call it professional lie, they say it's a business, uh, what is it called now? All liars say we'll find, we'll have their part in the legs that burns with fire and brimstone. So all the, including lying, is unholiness. Tell the truth. I've told the truth before that they slapped me. And I took it kindly. Because I told the truth. I've told the truth before that I was almost sanctioned, if not for the grace of God. But I've made up my mind I'll continue to say the truth. 
have said the truth that I was supposed to give a contract, uh, to be given a contract, and was it, I wasn't given because I told, I told the truth. But that's the way that we are wired as Christians. Tell the truth. Revelation chapter 21 verse 27. Every time I read this part, it gives me a lot of concern for the body of Christ. Honestly. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defile it, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. We are talking about heaven here. There is a register. And it's only those who are living holy lives that their name will enter that register. He said that will... He, Heaven is a holy place. It's a prepared place for a prepared people. Don't let anybody deceive you and say it's not possible to live above sin, therefore go ahead sinning. No. It is possible to live above sin because the word of God says so. If you are not there, pray. God will take you there. First John chapter 3. Verses 8 and 9. First John chapter 3. Please, that's not in the outline. Just want to chip that in. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. The reason why Jesus came is to destroy the work of the devil. And what is the work of the devil? Sin. Yes, verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remains in him. The seed of God is the word of God. The seed of God is Jesus. He remains in him. And he cannot sin. Have you taken it again? And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Hallelujah. So, the life of sin will not make heaven. The life of sin will not make heaven. Righteous kings will make heaven. In fact, the Bible said they will bring the glory of this world and take it to heaven. Righteous king is in the Bible. So, let us not deceive ourselves and let us not allow anybody to deceive us. Sin will exclude us from heaven. Holiness will enlist us into getting to heaven at last. Amen. Praise God. Jesus is coming back for a church without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle. In Ephesians, is it chapter 5 or chapter 6? When, when we read from verse 21, when we read during marriage, Yes, Ephesians chapter 5. Go on, go on. Go on. Go on. Sorry, move back a bit, 20, 23. Let's go back to 22. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting myself walked up now. The church is where I'm going. It's coming for the church. Yes, husband love your wife even as Christ loved the church that he gave his own <laughs> yes, go on. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. Yes? That he might present it to himself. A glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that which is holy and without blame. So Jesus is coming for a spotless church. The rapture will only take away those 
who are living holy life. First Thessalonians chapter 4. From verse 13. Are you there? But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as other which have an hope. Yes. For if, I be, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Yeah. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Next. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Yes. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught together with them in the sky, in the cloud, to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. That's the rapture. That's why all of us should be expecting the rapture to take place. But we must be ready in holiness and righteousness. As I close this evening, Luke chapter 1, verse 74 and 75. Luke chapter 1, verses 74 and 75. That he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemy might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. We are to serve God in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. That's the mind of God for us. Conclusion. The believer stands to benefit so much from holiness. Holiness is not bondage. It is freedom indeed. It is a lifestyle and not mere conformity to a list of rules. We can live holy life. It is possible. Next week we'll be looking at consequences on unholy living. Bow down your heads and talk to God tonight. Make up your mind you will live holy lives. Make up your mind you will remain rapturably ready so that whether Jesus come tonight at 735 or he doesn't come in another 90 years, you are ready. Rapturable.